Spencer Tracy is one of the best actors of his generation. I recently watched one of his later movies, Bad Day at Black Rock, where he's looking into the disappearance of a war friend in a town ruled by thugs. His prowess against Robert Ryan, Lee Marvin, Ernest Borgnine is awe-inspiring. This feels like an unusual choice of a role to play. Having said that, this is a remake where his predecessor, Frederick March, won an Academy Award. This is his only venture into horror, the 1941 version of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. good doctor is in church. Behind him, a man starts acting up to the point where the people around him are getting anxious and the police are called. While Jekyll dissuades the police from arresting him, he takes the man to be evaluated. He doesn't believe the man is deranged or a threat to society, but someone whose other side had come to the surface. A recent event in their life had caused this to manifest. Jekyll believes he can find the answer to the mysteries of hysteria and madness. And from there, Robert Louis Stevenson's story comes to life. Unfortunately, this is an inferior version. It doesn't work as well as the 1931 version. But it doesn't mean it's a write-off given the names attached. Spencer Tracy, he had made history by being the first of two actors to win back-to-back -back Academy Awards. The second, Tom Hanks, decades later. Lana Turner, one of the best starlets of the 1940s. Ingrid Bergman, best remembered for her role in Casablanca the following year. She was the second person in the history of the Academy Awards to win three as a performer. The first being the almost forgotten Walter Brennan. To this day, no one has been able to match the record of wins by a performer. The record is four, set by Catherine Hepburn. And then you have director Victor Fleming, who two years previous had made Gone with the Wind and The Wizard of Oz. Whilst reading about Fleming, I found out something very interesting. He entered show business as a stuntman. The only other director I know of who had that start is John Landis, a guy whose work I grew up watching. The Blues Brothers, American Werewolf, Trade in Places, The Three Amigos, uh, Coming to America. I did say this is an inferior work, but it does have some things to offer, particularly with the, the names attached. It's nicely shot. The turn of the century London looks beautiful. The costumes and sets are so lavish. Whatever you think about it, it has its merits, but it's not one of those horror movies that you watch every few months like Alien, The Exorcist, or Halloween. You an acquaintance of Jekyll? Yes. Yes, of course, I'm a friend, an old friend. Now let me have the... Where is Dr. Jekyll? Oh, don't worry, he's alive. What's the matter, is he ill? No, no, he's perfectly all right, I tell you. Not... Very well, then I'll come with you and see for myself. You pretentious fool. If you take another step with that, I'll shoot. Today's video is brought to you by Chamberlain. Mm -hmm. 